Ethan, I'm going to be your nurse today. Hi, my name's Ethan. Hi, Ethan. Um, is it okay if I call you Ethan? Sure. Or do you prefer Mr. Delecto? Whichever one you think is fine. <laughs> it's important that you ask that question because um, people from a previous generation do not like to be called by their first name. Okay, now he introduced himself to me as Ethan, but I still want to verify that that is okay. So introduction is first. Okay, now you're going to tell your patient what you're about to do. Okay, so intro. Now we're going to ask permission to complete an assessment. Okay, does he know what an assessment is? No. I don't know, probably not. But is it okay if I just do a little checking on you today? I'm gonna just kind of feel around on your head, listen to your lungs, your heart, um, just prepare some information for the doctor. Would that be okay? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, all right. So we're gonna go ahead and start at your head, um, Ethan. Have you fallen or hit your head or anything lately? Not recently. No? When was the last time you fell? I don't know, I'm kind of clumsy sometimes. Okay, okay, do you live alone? Yeah. Okay, um, do you have stairs at your house? Yeah. So with him saying that he's a little bit clumsy at times, this opens the door for open-ended questions. Um, well, he, he kind of, I shouldn't really give him an open-ended question, but um, we can kind of dig a little bit more info out of him, okay? Because now we're going to think more on the social services side. He lives alone, he's fallen. This is true, what are you talking about? <laughs> so maybe we need to like <laughs> reach out a little bit. Um, is it okay if I go ahead and touch your scalp? Yeah. Okay, so first we are assessing head and neck, okay? Head and neck is first. So I'm going to just feel around, okay? You're feeling for lumps, bumps, lesions. You're at the same time, you're looking for nits, bugs, things like that. I'm obviously not going to say to him, I'm just gonna take a little peek in here and make sure you don't have any head lice. Okay, we're not gonna do that. But you're doing that as you're assessing his scalp, okay? While I'm doing this, I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna look at his ears now. Are his ears aligned? Is one higher than the other? Okay. So we went from scalp straight down. Okay. I'm looking at the ears. Okay. Just going to take a look inside your ear. Make sure that the opening of the ear is open. Okay. Just check in there. So then we're going to come down. And right as I'm feeling at the ears, I'm going to come down to the neck. And I'm gonna start feeling those lymph nodes. See if I feel any swelling, any pain when I push? No. No. Can you open your mouth for me? So here we're checking, when he opens his mouth, we're looking at feeling at the jaw. You can close that, okay? So everything looks good there. But while I'm at the neck, what am I gonna feel for? So I can look visually to see if the jugular is distended. His pulse is off, obviously going pretty fast there, but he does not have JVD, which is jugular vein distension. Okay, and I'll we, we can get into how to see that a little bit later. Um, but we can see that his, his pulses are going, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to feel. Okay, see what's up. Good, carotids are good. We check that. Now we can listen. So we felt them, sorry. So when you are, you first inspect with your eyes, right? Then technically I should have auscultated next, but I like to feel down through at the same time. And then we're gonna listen to the carotid on those sides. Okay, all right, so. That is head, neck. Questions about head and neck? We don't have to do pupils. No, no. I haven't gotten there yet. Okay. But 
I know she has every step down like this, but as we literally go down through it, you're gonna do it quicker than that, okay? So I'm like, like if I was doing it, I would literally be doing this. Okay, everything feels good right there. I'm feeling the back of the head. We're good. I'm looking at the ears at the same time, all very quickly, okay? So next, we are going to, we're gonna check his pupils and his, the symmetry of his eyes, okay? So you'd have your pen light. She won't let me have one. That's okay. I'm sorry. Um, so it's kind of hard here because I can't really. My pen's awful high. <laughs> yes, and I'm, I'm short. Um, so if you're looking at the symmetry, make sure the eyes are aligned. One's not higher than the other. Okay. So when we check the pupil reaction, we're going to ask him, can you go ahead and cover your right eye for me? Okay, now we take the light out here and we move inward. Okay, we're looking for what? So that the pupil is going to be doing this, right? It's going to be bouncing. Okay, so then we're going to ask him to switch. We're going to come over here and we're going to do the same. Okay, go ahead and... Go ahead and put your hands down for a second. And now we're going to check his field of vision, okay? His visual field or his peripheral vision. So we're gonna ask him again to go ahead and cover that right eye. Okay, so we're going to, I'm gonna, see, it's so hard to do it like this because- You want me to sit up? Yeah. That would work better. I'm gonna have you look right at my nose, okay? okay. And this, you would, you could literally have them sitting up in the bed at this point. Your head is up. Yeah, you can stand right at my nose. Keep oh, up. Okay, yep, okay. just like that. So then you're going to take your pen in, out, in, up, down, over. Make sure that he can follow my pen. Wait, am I looking at the pen or am I looking at your nose? I'm confused. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, I got you. You want to follow my, I'm doing the next part, sorry. So, you're going to follow my pen light. Okay. Up, okay. over, don't move your head. Perfect, the other side. Okay. Now, I'm going to bring, I'm going to have him look right at my nose and then cover that other eye. You're going to bring, look right here, and you're going to bring it closer to him and you're gonna watch your pupils, okay? And then we're gonna switch. Okay, that's it. Okay, any questions on the eyes? Is it as hard as you guys thought? I have one question. Um, so Miss Fitch, she showed us, like, instead of them covering like their own eye, like she showed us to kind of put your hand here. Like this? Yes, you can do, you can do so. that. So you can do this, and you can go easily, quickly like this, go and follow my pen and do the same thing. Yes, you can do that. Okay, I just didn't know which way you wanted it done. Either way. Okay. As long as you're only getting one side at a time. Okay? <coughs> All right. So then, my mouth is so dry. <clears throat> so, you're going to ask him why we're here. Go ahead and blink for me. What are we, ch we're checking cranial nerves now, right? Go ahead and blink. Good. Then we're gonna look at the nose. And at this point, did she tell you to like an alcohol swab or anything like that? So that's cranial nerves. But um, I prefer that you at least get the idea of what you're doing. Okay, so you can just look, go ahead and close your eyes for me. Okay, can you tell me what this is? I did my eyes closed. Okay, can you smell this? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So you can do an alcohol swab, you can do something citrusy, anything that has a strong smell. You want to make sure that, what's that nerve? Olfactory. You want to see that they have that scent, okay? Um, now you're going to ask him to say light, di light, night, dynamite. Can you repeat after me? Light, night, dynamite. Light, night, dynamite. Okay, so you're checking what? <laughs> What cranial nerve is that? You guys know? Gustatory. Okay, I have a sheet for you. 
Okay, but you're right. Okay, so you're asking him to say that, okay? And then while we're up here, I did forget one thing, Jordan, um, with the ears. Okay. Go ahead and look for this way. And I'm just going to whisper something in your ear, okay? And then I'm going to give you three words, and then when we're finished with our assessment, I'm just going to have you repeat this back to me, okay? Okay. Okay, so you, re you give him three phrases, and we're going to ask him later what they were. And then I'm going to hold my fingers here, and you can use a piece of paper, a piece of strand of their hair, and you're going to kind of rub it between your fingers to see can, with your eyes closed. Can you tell me what ear I'm holding this up to? It's my right ear. Okay. You want to check his hearing. So I forgot that. Sorry. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so now at this time, we're going to look at his mouth. I'm just going to tell you guys we're going to look for broken teeth, missing teeth. Um, anything like you know lesions ulcers anything in the mouth okay at the same time we're looking at the color of the mucosa what's the mucosa gums, gums roof of the mouth the whole surrounding okay is it pale is it red nice and beefy red or pale what would pale mean yeah. some dehydration maybe good so everything's good there we've already felt the neck so now, can you shrug your shoulders for me? Good. You're going to push down while he's shrugging his shoulders to see if he has that ability. Okay? I'm going to ask you just to hold my fingers and squeeze as tight as you can. Am I going too fast, Jordan? No. Okay. Squeeze as hard as, as you as can. can. Yep. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> okay, so you, we're checking his, uh, if his grasp is equal. Is he weaker on one side than the other? Which could mean what? Stroke. Possible stroke. Okay, and then we're gonna have him, okay, can you push against my hands? Okay? Sorry. Like, I'm gonna go backwards, and now I'm going to say I'm gonna push towards him, but you resist me. Okay, good job. All right, any questions there? So now I'm ready. Now this is a full head to toe, okay? Mm -hmm. There's a difference, but we'll get into that in a minute. Okay, so I did that. Now I'm gonna go to listen to his lungs down. Okay, you can lay down. Or do you guys lay it him sitting up? Sitting, sitting up. up. All right, so they told you nine and 12, or six. six, six can you come up and show me what they showed you just so I know what you're saying? You don't really have to listen, but. Okay, now your patient can become very exhausted from breath sounds. Gotcha. I made this. I made this last year. Yeah, so that's um, okay. So having them take that big breath in and out every time can be exhausting, but we want them to kind of take a little breath in. Blow it out, breath in, blow it out. If they become fatigued, you want to tell them, if you become too short of breath or tired, just tell me and I'll stop, okay? So, you're going to start, so your clavicle is here, so about right here, right below the clavicle, in and out. So that's one, two, I may have you kind of come in over here a little bit more, too. And then down. So this is technically one. So you never lift your stethoscope. So it's here. You don't go up here and over here. It's here, straight across. Okay? So here. You breathe in, breathe out. It's here. And then two is going to be kind of in between here and the nipple line. So we're at like here. Two, three, now we're going to be about nipple line. Oops, I lifted, sorry. So now we're going to come down just a tiny bit. So this is right under. 
It's just I, I just a teaching oh, it's it's teaching okay. that you don't have to lift your stethoscope as you learn your placement. Oh, okay. it's easier just to leave your stethoscope in place mm -hmm. and move it. Okay. Now, when we're in the field, you can obviously lift it. Okay. We'll see um, sure. uh, yeah, no, that's okay. a good question. Um, so then we're going to come so right below the nipple line. Then you're going to come kind of over just a little bit, not quite under his arm pit area here, but pretty close to it. And you're gonna have him do it again. So then we're going to come down here to the base. There. See, I always go here, and then I come over here. Mm -hmm. I don't follow that. Like I come here, and then he would. Then we're gonna drop to the base, and then over here. Again. Six on each side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, just to go over it again, I'm just, you don't have to take the big breath. Oh, thank goodness. Right <laughs> under the sternum. One, or the sternum, clavicle. One, two, slightly down. Three, four, nipple line. Sorry, I guess that's not, I'm counting wrong. Okay, right below, right below, slide over. Now I'm going to come over here and last place there and there. Any questions? What do we see in the hospital? Four. What do we do? All of them. Okay. Now you can either go directly to the back and do his lung sounds, or you can stay in the front and do his heart sounds, okay? Completely up to you. You can say, go ahead and sit up for me so I can just get behind you. Can you lean forward for me a little bit? And we're gonna do, so it is still, it's the opposite side, okay? So if he was flipped, you guys understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is going to be how many places? Nine. One. Two. Three. I think it counted weird. So this is considered one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Questions? Can we do it again? You literally are barely moving your stethoscope. One, two, or one, two, three, can you guys see? Four, five, six, seven, eight. Questions? You guys see that on the interview? You don't sound all that deep. No, I was thinking this call would have been over that. five minutes ago. I know, but this is by the book. Okay, go ahead and turn that around. Okay, so now you're going to look at your heart sounds. Is that she's doing that? Everyone, she switches her heart. Okay. So how many heart places do we have? So the best way to remember this is, okay, so what is this area called? Where's the first aortic. place that we're listening? Aortic. The aortic, the aorta, right? So we're like right here, right? Like on this side of the sternum. Okay, so my back was. I heard yeah. on this side. Oh. I know, but you're listening <laughs> like right here at this, kind of at the sternum. Right where my buttons are. Yeah, like here. I had a student listen all the way over here last year for checkoff. Don't do that. So like here, 
And then you're going to come over. What's this area called? Pulmonic. Pulmonic. And you're basically just going to, this is herbs, tricuspid, which is, wait, tell me if I'm not in the right spot here, tricuspid, and then um, your apical or your mitral. But you're basically going to go here, 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 around the heart. So if the, the rule of thumb is just to go around the heart, okay? For the assessment, so do you want to do it in the skin or it doesn't matter? No, no, no. Okay. Yeah. No. No. Should it be skin One, to skin, like when you actually do it? Three, four, five to get the effects of the heart. Okay, did you get that? Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, apex. You should really do skin to skin anytime you're listening for anything. Okay, any questions about that? No? Okay. So, go ahead and leave that there. So, we've listened to heart sounds, lung sounds. Now, what am I going to do? Well, if if you do and you have women with bigger chests, like it's one, two, three, four, I've got to lift your breast up and I'm gonna come up underneath it. That's just you just tell them what you gotta do. Usually they'll lift them all the way for you. Okay. okay. All right. So what are we gonna do next? So we're gonna do abdomen. So what did he tell you about abdomen? Hmm. So what did he tell you about abdomen? I typed all this out. Four to listen to, nine to percuss, nine to help. Okay. So I just want you to know. So you have you have four quadrants, right? Okay. So what do you do first? You you look first. Okay, I'm looking at his breathing. You always look, listen, feel with the abdomen. Why am I not going to palpate? Like I can move everything stirred all up. So I'm looking at his breathing. I'm making sure the breathing pattern is good. Okay, so then I'm going to listen. Okay, so I'm going to. And I'm going to lower his pants in my way. Okay, so how many places did he tell you? Four. 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 Four is all I do. Okay, so it would literally be one, two, three, four. You'll find some that want you to do more. I think API might tell you more, but there's four quadrants. All I need to know are the four quadrants. Okay, what if I don't hear a bell sound? Listen for five minutes. If you do not hear an active bowel sound, you're going to listen for five full minutes before you move the stethoscope. You cannot document that somebody has absent bowel sounds without listening for a full five minutes. Okay? How long are we listening anyway? Okay, what if they're hypoactive? A minute. So if you hear good gurgling, like 10, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, you're good to move on to your next spot. But if they're hypoactive, then you're gonna listen to that full minute. No bowel sounds, five full minutes. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Questions? And then palpate. You have to do the, the percussion. Yeah. Technically. I mean, do they have to do that for the? Listen, if I'm in the room with you, I'm not going to make you percuss. But it's the nine quad, like the nine areas. So that would be one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, basically you're splitting the four quads and going at the top, the middle, and the bottom. Okay? And then we are palpating. You tell me if you feel any tenderness, any soreness of the area, and you're just, I don't know how he told you to palpate, but I am not, did he tell you to do it like that? Mm -hmm. Mr. Holt told us to do four, like four, I believe, like one, two, three, four, Circles to cover more surface here. Was that and that was yeah. okay. Yes. Yes. It was nine, to do nine. Nine. Yeah, nine. 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 So it is okay to do the four areas and pushing as hard as he did. But my fear is if you have something going on, I don't want to push too too far down, too deep. And that's probably why I would palpate in the nine areas. Yeah, palpate in the nine areas. Okay, so you're feeling. And obviously you have to put some pressure. If you feel any mass, anything at all, stop. Because you're feeling for like a visceral mass right. at this point, right. right? Okay. So if you would feel anything at all, stop. Okay. But if he told you to do the big circles, and this is you see this all the time, all the time, and that's okay. You can do the four. However you do it is going to be okay. You're getting the same result. Um, or we're going to palpate like this in those nine areas, okay? And he, if you do, it might be easier to do this. But I like to make sure I'm not missing something. Okay, questions? No, what's next? Bladder thickness, is that it? So, I mean, I don't, do we have to check for bladder fullness? Did it have that on ATI? Yeah. ATI did. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. why we're having you do this. Yeah. I you mean, I. List. So, I, you do not have to for your for um, your checkup. Okay, you're going to feel bladder fullness as you palpate. Okay, but that's not even. I'm not concerned with bladder fullness. Okay. Okay, so we're going from valves to. Well, we already did that. We did bowel sounds, then um, your perineal ear area. So we are looking, okay? I know it's uncomfortable. For in there, you're just going to tell me or tell your patient, I'm going to go ahead and look down here. Is that okay with you? Just to make sure you don't have any redness, swelling, open areas, anything at all. I know it's uncomfortable, um, but you have to do it. It's part of our job. So we're going to look. Make sure there's nothing going on there. And you're going to ask him while you're here. Do you want any burning your cane when you go to the bathroom? I mean, you might. So, like, when you pee, do you have any pain, discomfort? Do you have any trouble going to pee? No? Do you start and stop at all? And if I have to, it's a talent. <laughs> You'll have patients that'll say that. No, you'll get it. Um, do you get up at night having to go to the bathroom a lot? Not often. What am I what am I trying to get to? Frosting. Okay. So what do we do next? We're checking for edema. So we're gonna start. Um, you know, I did not tell you guys questions as you were coming down. See how even I forget on the spot and you can say, oh, I'm gonna come right back up here and check this pulse here, check here. You're not gonna be marked wrong for that, okay? So you're going to check for swelling or edema. We're looking at the thighs. We're looking at the legs. What are we checking? What do we say? Huh? Checking for hitting. hitting. So we're going to take our finger. We're going to lift your leg up here. We're just going to look and see if there's any pitting here. We push down with our finger. I don't see any edema there. I don't see any over here. Okay. While we're here, we're going to check our pulses. Right? I'm gonna check those pulses. Do I ever feel with my thumb? No. Okay. Why? Yes. Okay. So we're gonna come down here. We're gonna check this one. Okay. Now you're gonna have him go ahead and push against my hands. Good. Now resist and pull away from me, okay? I'm gonna pull towards me, you pull that way. Good.
good, okay? Looks pretty in depth when you look up there at the board. We'll, we'll um, clean it up later. But it's really not that big of a deal, okay? Um, we're also going to check his cap refill and his toes. Much I forgot to do these fingers, but we'll go back up and do that. So what's his capillary refill? What are we checking? His oxygen, yeah. blood circulation, right? Okay, so his oxygen, we want less than three seconds, right? Mm -hmm. So we push down on the nail bed, we let go, it should go back to pink, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Let me check your hand just to see if any Okay. Anything else that we missed? Check the like, normal breathing rate when you're going over the uh, pulses. When you do your pulses, you're checking his normal breathing rate. Let's check good. the heels, make sure there's no Check the heels, make sure there's no softened areas. There's some more stuff I want to have in a minute, but we stand up. But we will look at the heels, make sure that they're not red. Um, any open areas? Check in between the toes. Do you check for feeling like when you're running fingers? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody has um, diabetes, we can definitely check and make sure they have um, feeling there. So you can take your finger and start at the, the nail and start at the heel and move your finger up. Okay. What about creating your smile for us to turn out? Yeah. We, I told Mrs. Fritch that I did not want you guys to have the stress of cranial nerves right now. Right. Um, that when you got into the room to do your assessment, I really just want you to know how to do a head, like start at the head and work your way down. I do want you to learn your cranial nerves um, and you can incorporate them in, but I told them, and we all agreed, that it was too advanced right now mm -hmm. to do all of your cranial nerves. So if you miss a cranial nerve, I am not, we're not going to say anything else to you, okay? But yes, we did miss, because we did the shoulder pushes, but we did not, you can click the tongue. Uh, we did the light, light night dynamite. You can have them clip the tongue, stick your tongue out for me in and out. Um, what else did you say? Open your smile. mouth, swallow, smile to make sure we haven't, and you do always want to have them smile to make sure they haven't had, potentially had a stroke. Okay. Um, what? Or Bell's palsy. Yes, or Bell's palsy. That's, it's going to be, uh, can you have, go ahead and sit up on the side of the bed for me? Okay, now I'm going to have you... I'm going to have you stand to your feet once you feel comfortable. What am I going to have them do? Walk. Not yet. Yes. Put your fingers to your nose and you're going to stand on one foot for me. Now, when you're doing this, you need to support your patient. So we're checking his balance. Okay. The which balance of a cat. Okay. Okay. Anything that ATI said or that the other instructor said? Yes. So that yes, by putting your hands in your normal assessment, no. For ATI, yes. Um, it does show this, the shoulder separation. Did they have you doing this? Yes, I typed it out for me. Yeah. Um, it does, sh you can see the equal parts of the breath sounds. Because we can, but we can easily see if we have a chest that is not equally rising without putting our hands on most people. Um, but it is a, an easier way to see that. So let me do it very quickly without me telling you guys, like mm -hmm. just so you can see what I'm doing. 